I've always known her, Mom Hubbard, Sister Fern Hubbard. Man, um, why don't we begin with a word of prayer? Feel free to pray aloud with me if you would like. Father, we love you and we thank you this day for the opportunity yes, Lord, that you've Jesus given name. us, God. Thank you, Father. We gather here today to celebrate the life of Lord, a loved one. Thank you for 36 years, Lord, that you have blessed this man and children with. We thank you for that, God. Oh, help us today, Thank Lord. you for helping us today, God. Put her in your hands. Time, time for blessing the family, thank Lord. Thank you for the the loved ones. We thank you for thank your you peace Lord. that passes all understanding. And we invite you, Lord, to in the name bring of Jesus. that today, God. Bring it into this environment right now, Lord. I pray, God, that you would strengthen, that you would sustain. I pray that you would give us direction as we go forward. Amen. And we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm Pastor Nathan Dormer of the Apostolic Church of Topeka, Kansas. And uh, we're so glad to have you here today. It's a, it's a small gathering, um, not as we would like to uh, to do things, but due to circumstances beyond our control, it's, uh, it's, uh, it is what it is. So thank you for being here. Thank you to the family for making the, uh, the effort to come and to, uh, to recognize and memorialize this wonderful lady. Um, and at this time, uh, we want to uh, invite Sister Jocelyn to come forward, and uh, she's going to share some acknowledgement of condolences. I knew that I would lose or forget something, <laughs> and I did. Uh, in this day and age, I guess we get a lot of stuff. We've gotten a lot of uh, sympathy and empathy from people in text and online and in Facebook and different places. And I have printed out three that were on uh, the Dove website. Uh, two of them were for were from people who knew my mom from Aldersgate. They had parents who were out there, and uh, one lady said, "You know, I used to always visit with Fern. They had a bird thing out there. When I go out to see my dad, and she said I loved her. She had such a sweet spirit. And this particular lady told me she said." Man, I wish my dad was like your mom. <laughs> your mom has such a sweet spirit. She and her, her dad yeah. was cussing everybody out and <laughs> calling oh, them names. <laughs> and uh, the other one was uh, from another lady who had a parent out there who would, they would stop, you know, mother was social and she would talk to anybody and everybody. And she said that smile that your mom had, you know, and she would stop and talk to her. And um, the other one was from Sister Janet Savage. And she talked to me about how mother was always dressed to the nine. And, and she had a sweet spirit and she just really loved, you know, being with my mom and talking to her. And uh, I got a, a card from Sister Edna and Jerome, and it says, Her voice will echo in memories you hold. Her smile will warm you through stories retold. Her love will touch you in spirit each day. Her life will be treasured in many ways. For this is what the Lord says, As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. And then this one is from um, a friend of mine that I worked with at Blue Cross and Blue Shield. And she knew Mother. Um, she met her a lot of times when Roseanne and Diane would be doing something. And she brought me a gorgeous plant. Looks like a mother-in-law's tongue on steroids <laughs> with a big pink flower in the middle of it. It's really pretty. And this is, gently wrap yourself in the warm memories of your mother. Let the love that held you close continue to bring you strength and comfort with sympathy 
Diane and Bill. Um, I thought that was kind of an overview of people who, who knew my mom, people who, who only met her at Aldersgate uh, while she had dementia and she still had that same spirit. People who knew her from church and people who were not in church, you know, who, who only knew me and, and met my mom through me. And uh, I, I had it. Do you have it on here? No. Um, I put a little deal on your program there at the bottom, thanking everyone who has sent us uh, cards or texts or anything. Thank you very much for acknowledging my mom. It's really hard, you know, these days when you, when you used to have funerals and people, you know, come and hug your neck and stuff like Brother Khan says all the time. I really miss hugging, hugging necks and shaking yeah. hands and stuff. In occasions like this, we miss showing the empathy and everything, but thank you, all of you for being here today. I know your family, but thank you for being here. <laughs> This time we want to have a silent reading of the obituary. Uh, on your program, you will find the obituary for um, Sister Fern Hubbard. And so let's take a moment and read that silently now. on the surface uh, that we've read in the obituary, but it's, uh, it's very interesting, and uh, I'm so grateful to have known. At this time, we have one song that we have prepared. It's pre-recorded, um, and we will play that. As I understand it, it was one of Fern's favorite songs. It is His Eye is on the Sparrow. Thank you. 
that was Sister Sylvia Palmer on the accompaniment and Sister Carissa Glamour as the vocalist. I've heard it said before that if we were to take the pain out of death, we would first have to take the love out of living. And as you know, that's an impossibility because as you live, you will find something that you gravitate towards. You will encounter individuals that express that love to you first. And I find myself over the last few years thinking a lot about the love of living. Specifically, I've recalled the many times and the many ways that I've seen the love of those around me that has lived out. And we're here today to celebrate the life of Sister Fern Hubbard, mom to some of you, grandma to others, great-grandmother. If you spent any time around her, as you all did, and you didn't learn, then I think it's likely because you weren't watching and you weren't listening. Because the limited time that I was able to spend around her was time that was rich and I could learn from being in her presence. And I do think that this today should be, in spite of the sadness, this should be a celebration, even though it's our loss as well, because there was a decision that had been made years ago. She had decided, and then, as I understand it, she had followed through with that decision. The scripture offers comfort to us today, and it helps us when we read in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13, but I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, Amen. Thank you, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. We've got hope today. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And that's the comfort that we have today, that Fern is just merely asleep. And someday she will rise again. Amen. No doubt we find ourselves wrestling, as we all do, with questions today. Tomorrow is probably going to present a few more and should God graciously grant us 96 years like we gave her, then I'm sure we're going to continue to find things and opportunities in life where we have questions. And even the Bible is full of questions. Make no mistake about it. We're not very far into the creation account when in Genesis 2 and 9 we see one of the first appearances of that mark in the Bible. The Lord begins questioning Adam and Eve. Most of you are familiar with it. Asking them, where are you? And what have you been listening to? What influence have you permitted into your life? And that's questions that, as I thought about it, Mom Hubbard, she probably asked those same questions of her own family at one time or another. Those questions were followed up by more questions, questions of, did you disobey? It's Genesis 2.11. And finally, that question that has made kids squirm for millennia. What have you done? I see one of the daughters shaking her head. She's heard that. I would submit to you that those kind of questions were answered by mom as well. She proved her commitment because she chose a man and she stuck faithfully in a covenant relationship with him. I understand for 59 years, that's not very common these days. And even she stuck to those marriage vows, you know, those common vows for a year in sickness and in health. Just read the obituary and you'll find that she exemplified that she stuck with that man, even during some very challenging times in this hell. The incredible example of David finds us witnessing another question. A young man stood that day and said, Is there not a cause? Is anyone going to fight for what is right? Is anyone going to stand up? Was the question that David asked that day. Is, is there anyone that's going to be willing to trust God to help you to do what others might be afraid to even 
attempt. Again, I find myself, as I reflect on this woman, saying, yeah, I think she answered those kind of questions. Because it's it's settled for mom. It's settled for firm. There's no more chance for change or no more opportunity for distraction, no more temptation that she has to face. It's settled for her. But for those who remain, the questions remain, where are you in him? Am I listening to him? How is my obedience to him? We could stand here and talk at length about her obedience, and she's worthy of that remembrance. And the big one that we're all going to face someday, a big question is, is what have you done? It's perhaps uncomfortable to think about that, but it's not uncomfortable if we remember this beautiful promise. He will not leave us comfortless. Amen. So there's answers for questions in the Word of God. And I turn to the Word of God right now in conclusion. And I read to you from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, from the New Living Translation. The Bible says that it is the same with the resurrection of the dead. Our earthly bodies are planted in the ground when we die, but they will be raised to live forever. Our bodies are buried in brokenness, but they will be raised in glory. They are buried in weakness, but they will be raised in strength. They are buried as natural human bodies, but they will be raised as spiritual bodies. For just as there are natural bodies, there are also spiritual bodies. The scriptures tell us the first man, Adam, became a living person. We talked about him. But the last man, Adam, that is Christ, is a life-giving spirit. What comes first is the natural body, and then the spiritual body comes later. Adam, the first man, was made from the dust of the earth, while Christ, the second man, came from heaven. Earthly people are like that earthly man, and heavenly people are like the heavenly man. Just as we now, like the earthly man, we will someday be like that heavenly man. Amen. 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 What I am saying, dear brothers and sisters, is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye. When the last trumpet is blown, for when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed, for our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, the scripture will be fulfilled. Death will be swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? For the sting, for, for sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin power. But thank God, thank God, He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, we want to welcome to speak to us, Senior Pastor. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Huck, Pastor Dormer. And it was my privilege to pastor Fern for many years and be a part of her life. We cherished Albert and, and all of her children. Jocelyn, especially those that were in our church close to us. And I'm reminded of what uh, Paul said about Timothy. He inherited from his mother and his grandmother certain characteristics. And there was a characteristic in Fern, of course, that she didn't give up. She didn't quit. When her husband came down with uh, a disease, he had to be away from the family for many years while they lived in Coffeeville. She didn't give up. 
to raise those children. Stay faithful. I see that faithfulness in Jocelyn and, and of course, in Albert. Albert put up with me, a 26-year-old young pastor who didn't know much. But he was faithful. And I learned a lot from my good relationship with Albert Hubbard. And I'm so thankful to be connected to this beautiful family. Thank you, Jocelyn, for all that you've done for our Sunday school, for the children that you go visit on a regular basis. You have been such a blessing. I'd like to say that that characteristic of mental strength has been passed on to all our Kurdish descendants. Those of you here today that may not know the Lord like you really should, I would like to invite you to join with us in not only believing in eternal, not only believing in heaven, but also believing how to get there. And that's actually very good. You must repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Lord, we thank you for letting us be here today with all these beautiful people in this beautiful cemetery. But Lord, we know heaven is going to be so much more beautiful than anything we can see on earth. Thank you for the beauty of seeing the life of Fern Hubbard and all of her children. Thank you for the grace of God that has been upon that beautiful spirit and how sweet her spirit was. We thank you, Lord, that that spirit has been promoted to a heavenly place. And heaven's going to be full of a lot of people just like Fern and Albert and so many others. We pray, Lord, that you would be with the family. Comfort our hearts. Let us trust in you and believe in your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Pastor. At this time, we want to give space for any family members or any guests that are here today. If you have um, any comments, any memories, uh, a brief story that you would like to share about Fern, we want to give you an opportunity to do so. Do it right. What was that? Yeah, that's fine. Speak up. Thank you, Mom. I think we're all here for the plain fact that this woman granted us all in every type of way of life. So, we all have stories. We all have memories. We all have love. Thank God. And we have all of that. Thanks to the Lord above and this woman. And I'm appreciative to know that back what you said and what you both of you put, you know, sorry, I apologize for stuttering, but brought to attention that we're, our minds are strong because of her. She passed that down to everybody. Thank you, Jesus. So, this is a hard time, but at the same time, a blessed time because it brought us all back to realize that we are strong. And even though our matriarch's gone to me and my eyes, we're still going to be way even stronger than this and closer. We got to shoot. We just found out about a new family. We're not alone. Yes. And I say that with love. That's, that's a blessing. Yes. And no, togetherness is going to get us, keep on keeping us going in the future. So I love you all. I love my grandmother. Love everybody that we've lost, but at the same time, we never lost. We're all here. Right. So, the love will stay, and we're going to keep that going. Love y'all. That's all I want to say. So. Right. Hey, well spoken, Javon. Thank you for sharing that. Is there anybody else that would like to share a memory? Make a comment. I'd like to share. Thinking of my grandmother, going to visit her, and one of her favorite things was cooking, and I think <laughs> cooking, bringing the family together, that was one of her strong points, and she, she loved to make us eat, I'm feeling, make sure you eat that, 
And her request, what do you want to, what do you want me to fix you? And of course, we, cheesecake grandma or something. She would find a recipe. Miss Dippy Mud. She would make it for us. She would quilt us, quilt, um, baby blankets, dolls. Mm -hmm. so she would take <laughs> grandma's old socks and make something out of it. Just creative. Um, and just think of all the years of just that time with her and stories she would tell us. And some of them were just like, oh, yeah, Grandma. Now, I wish she was alive. I could actually ask her some questions. But uh, I just thank God for her and her spirit. Um, but I think her, we went to see her just a couple of weeks ago. And we had to look through a window to see her. And they allowed us to talk to her. And because of the dementia and the state she was in, I was able to tell her how much we all loved her. And the church and the people from Cape Girardeau, Brother Randall, and his family have sent, you know, condolences, or, yeah, not condolences, but their blessings and all, saying that they were praying for her. And I remember her just laying there, and all of a sudden her face just kind of, like she heard everything I, could, I said, and but she wanted to respond and let me know, let me know, tell y'all that she did love y'all. And just to see her lay in there, and to be 96 years old, I just thank God for keeping His hand upon her, and thank God for all the prayers she prayed for all of us, and. and uh, just what she's done for the family, she she was a blessing, and I don't. There's no grandma like her. <laughs> I just I just thank God for her, yeah. and so that's that's all I have to say. No one like her. Anybody else would like to share something? I've kind of already <laughs> said something, but I'll say something again. Yeah. Um. I was talking to somebody the other day, and I, I said, you know, during this time, and I had to start, you know, thinking about doing this. And uh, I told somebody, I said, you know, I was in my 20s before I realized that my mother was super mom. <laughs> because uh, part of that time that Daddy was in the VA hospital, right, over the fields over there, he, he didn't get any pay from from the Navy. And so part of that time, my mom was on welfare, and she had six kids to take care of, and mm -hmm. she wasn't supposed to, but she went out and got a job. And she made our clothes. She she did all of that. She, she worked. And I was in my 20s, and we were sitting around talking to mom and daddy after we had moved them over here. And I'm sitting there thinking, man, I don't, I don't remember any problems. I remember one Christmas being told we weren't going to have Christmas presents because there just wasn't the, the money, you know, to go out and buy stuff. But I told somebody, I said, I had a, I had a great childhood. Mm -hmm. We made all our toys. We never went hungry. We had clothes. Yeah, they were homemade, but we had... I said, I, I do not remember any of this stuff <coughs> I'm here to talk about. And I have to say, that was my mother's doing. That was her doing. That we never felt any of that. We never felt the hard times that she was going through. She never let us see any of that. And uh, I was in my 20s before I really had to appreciate my mom. And this, this last thing, we were taking mom and daddy back over to Missouri after they'd been to the visit. And we were talking, and we were talking about, you know, mother and different things. And my dad said, yeah, I always knew your mother was one of those feminists. <laughs> We had to start laughing, you know, because, uh, you know, Daddy, there was women's work and there was men's work. And, you know, Mother had 
across the line taught and brought my brothers up to cook and, and so and, and we all shared the best stuff. I'm going I'm going to miss it. But at the same time, I know where she is, but it oh, well. my dad got told us at 72. I have a brief poem and then we'll conclude the service here. This is from the poem by George Washington Bethune entitled, It is Not Death to Die. It is not death to die to leave this weary road and midst the brotherhood on high to be at home with God. It is not death to close the eye long dimmed with tears and wake in glorious repose to spend eternal years. It is not death to fling aside this sinful dust and rise on some exultant wing to live among the just. Jesus, thou Prince of life, Thy chosen cannot die. Like thee, they conquer in the strife to reign with thee on high. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this blessed time that we have shared together today. We thank you for the life, God, that was poured out. God, for the example, for the blessing that firm was for all of us here today. We thank you for those who yet remain, O oh God, and we ask for your help. We ask for your strength. We ask for your peace. We ask, O oh God, that we would somehow be able, Lord, to follow in the footsteps, the example, Lord, of the one that we are here celebrating today, just as she endeavored to follow Jesus in your footsteps. We thank you for drawing near to those that are grieving, Lord, in the days months and years ahead. Draw nigh to us, O Lord, we need you. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. This concludes the service today. God bless you. You are dismissed. Amen. Amen.